Richard, one of the big problems, I guess, for Europe relative to the US is that there's no central bank regulator. And I guess across Europe, most policymakers now agree that that would be a good idea. Um, it seems we've made some progress towards that uh, today, perhaps, with the European Commission coming out and saying that perhaps you should, that role should lie with the ECB. Um, you think that's a good idea? I do think it's a good idea. Don't forget, this, this wretched Eurozone sovereign debt crisis has raged on for a couple of years. And one of the biggest problems has been that local regulators, national bank supervisors, and their governments have procrastinated. So the th these problems have been allowed to fester, and a bank problems become a sovereign problem, and a sovereign problems become a, a, a bank problem. So what we need is a kind of deus ex machina coming down and saying, here, this bank must be closed, or this bank must be bailed out. Don't leave it to the locals, do it centrally, so that the, we break this feedback loop between sovereign and bank. So, so it I think would get it's capital a, from whatever bailout mechanism into a bank more quickly for a start? It, it should do. So this is what we need. We need executive execution ability, if you like, coming from outside because the local guys are just failing to, to do it. The problem is, though, that the for all the commission suggesting that supervisory power goes and invests solely in the ECB and they'll have to keep it separate from their monetary side. For all of that, the problem is that we haven't got a single rule book in place yet, which is going to be called CRD4 or is called CRD4. That's Basel III becoming incorporated in European law. We haven't got a single guarantee fund at the moment and we haven't got a single bailout mechanism quite in place. It's nearly there, but not quite. And even if we had all those things, I mean, the ECB does so many things already, is that going to be too much on their plate, do you think? It could be. I mean, Germany is arguing already that the ECB should only be bothering about the SIFIs, the globally systemically important financial of which institutions. there are 27 20, 25, the something like that, exactly. As opposed to the 6,000 across the Eurozone. Exactly. Now, 6,000 banks, including all those tiny little rats and mice, small German savings banks, the old Spanish savings banks, of course, the Cajas, were at the root of the problem. So what we should be worrying about is that the German finance minister who wrote in the FT today is saying only focus on the big guys. Don't forget that most of the problems in, in Europe have come from small banks, That's just as much as from big ones, of course, yeah. And, and so the, the small ones would still be looked at by regional regulators, of course. I guess so. I guess so. The thing is that if, 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 um, if you have this single supervisor, he's going to be looking, whether at 25 or 6,000, he's not going to have the capacity to do it all. So it, I suspect what will happen is there'll be a single coordinator and then each national regulator will become a subsidiary or an agent of, of the ECB in Frankfurt. And that, that that's perfectly workable. There's al already a college of supervisors, so it's just formalizing, if you like that. The, the only problem I have, though, is that this is all getting hopelessly knocked out in, in timetable terms. And don't forget that Spain, which was going to get 100 billion euros to quench the thirst of it, its ailing banks and to do a bailout, is teetering close to a bailout itself. And one of the problems is that the conditionality on that is that you get your 100 billion only once there's a single supervisor in place. Yeah, things so are moving slowly. This is making this is a step in one direction, but it's still only a proposal, of course, and I guess we'll know um, more certainly uh, sometime in mid-September. Thank you very much, Richard.